In the summer of 1989, iconic TV show Treasure Hunt was drawing to a close. Having lasted seven series, Chatsworth Television had decided to bring the show to an end. And in its place, a brand new exciting adventure game show would debut on ITV. Interceptor. Fronted by the final Skyrunner from Treasure Hunt's original run, Annabelle Croft, Interceptor was a highly sophisticated version of Hide and Seek, in which two contestants must attempt to retrieve keys to each other's locked backpacks and meet up within the allotted 40 minutes, and inside one of the backpacks was a £1,000 prize. The only problem was the Interceptor, who would chase the contestants over the course of the game and attempt to shoot an infrared zapper at special receptors on their backpacks, locking them forever. It was up to the contestants to keep their backpacks shielded as they traversed various countryside locations under the direction of Annabelle via a radio link in search of the keys to their backpacks. It was an incredibly entertaining show, full of variety, comedy, and action. Despite only lasting for eight episodes, Interceptor has garnered a cult following and is widely regarded as one of the greatest TV game shows of all time. And in this video, we'll take a look back at how the show was developed and produced, the iconic character of the Interceptor, and recap each of the eight episodes in turn, reliving some of the best moments from the show. Before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up as we take a retrospective look at Interceptor. Interceptor was the brainchild of none other than the legendary Jacques Antoine, who also devised the incredible game shows Treasure Hunt, Fort Boyard, and The Crystal Maze. And the show was produced by Chatsworth Television in association with Thames Television. With Treasure Hunt drawing to a close in the summer of 1989, Chatsworth began production of this new show to take its place. With the experience of seven series of Treasure Hunt behind them, Chatsworth was confident in being able to pull off the logistics of this demanding new show, and the production team got to work in planning the eight episodes of the series. Among other things, the producers needed to find two very important people, the show's host and an actor to play the Interceptor. Malcolm Hayworth, the show's producer, brought in Annabelle Croft as the show's host. Malcolm already knew Annabelle, having worked with her on Treasure Hunt earlier that year, and decided to keep her on to front this new show. Annabelle is a former tennis player, who retired early at the age of 21, stating that she had become tired of the relentless travel involved and feeling like she no longer enjoyed playing. Immediately after her retirement, she became Annika Rice's replacement as the Skyrunner in Treasure Hunt and upon that show's conclusion, she was offered this new role as host of Interceptor. Finding a suitable Interceptor, however, would prove to be a little more challenging. Malcolm Hayworth has stated that a long and intensive period of casting was required to find the right man for the job, but in the end, they were able to find Sean O'Kane. Sean has experience as a stuntman and has been working as an actor since the early 1980s when he landed his first gig on the show Cagney and Lacey. When casting was taking place for the role of the Interceptor, Sean was living in Europe and came to London to visit a friend. After seeking representation in the UK, he was sent on three auditions and landed all three jobs, but due to conflicting filming dates, he could only choose one, and the one that he chose was Interceptor. Personally, I think Sean was an incredible choice to play the Interceptor. He looked the part and brought a unique blend of charisma and intensity to the role, not to mention those crazy squawking noises he would make from time to time to scare the contestants. Jesus! Kill! Over the fence! Over the fence! His portrayal of the Interceptor quickly captivated audiences as he seamlessly blended cunning strategy with sheer determination. His presence was what created the show's excitement and suspense, making him an indispensable component of the show's success. The contestant selection process was by no means a walk in the park. First, potential contestants had to fill out an application form and then attend an interview. 
After this, those successful spent a day at an assault course to test their fitness, and after successfully completing this, one final interview with the show's producers took place. Those who were lucky enough to be selected were then informed of where and when their episode would be filmed. The preparation for each episode involved the production team selecting the general locale for each episode, where the contestants would start, where the keys would be located, and a general route that the contestants would likely follow across the course of each episode. Rather than running around the entire time, transport was made available to the contestants in each episode, but it was up to them to find it. This invariably took the form of some kind of open-top vehicle like a truck, but as we'll soon see, there were many different forms of transport used in the show. This did give the show a slightly more linear feel, as it was clear the transport that was put on for them was all pre-arranged and not spontaneous, but it definitely added to the variety of the show, rather than simply having them run around in fields for 40 minutes. The helicopters were of course an integral part of the show, and there were two helicopters featured in the series. An Augusta 109 with the registration G mean was the Interceptor's main mode of transport, while an Augusta Bell Jet Ranger 206B was used to ferry the contestants to their starting locations. Castle Air Charters provided the helicopters and pilots for the show, as they had done for Treasure Hunt and a whole host of other television shows. As well as travelling by air, the Interceptor used a variety of land transport, including a beautiful Maserati Biturbo Spider, a Kawasaki ZX-10 motorcycle, and a Kawasaki KMX-200 motorcycle that was never actually used in any of the episodes. The Interceptor would also always start each episode at his lair, which would be a different location each time. Both contestants would be wearing radio gear to keep them in communication with each other and Annabelle. Annabelle helped to direct contestants from her base located nearby, where she had the use of a map and was shown where the contestants' keys were located. The gear is said to have been particularly heavy, which isn't surprising considering the size of it all, so I'm quite impressed that the contestants were able to keep running for the entire show while lugging all that gear with them. Lastly, the day before each episode was filmed, a full rehearsal took place using stand-in contestants to ensure everything was set for filming the following day. As there are only 8 episodes in total, let's now take a look back at each one in turn and relive all of the action. The first episode of Interceptor takes place in Kent, and we meet Annabelle and the first two contestants, Candy and Mark, outside Leeds Castle, which has been used in a number of movies and TV shows, including Nightmare. Annabelle explains the rules of the show, that the contestants will choose a backpack at random, one containing £1,000 and one that is empty. Then they will be blindfolded, put on board the helicopter, and dropped off at their starting locations, about six or seven miles apart, with the goal of retrieving the keys to each other's backpacks, meeting up within the allotted time, and opening the backpacks to win the money. All the while trying to stay away from the pesky Interceptor, who would be pursuing them and attempting to shoot their backpacks with his infrared gun, locking them forever. Once the contestants are dropped off at their starting locations and Annabelle is at her base, their 40 minutes begin. Mark and Annabelle quickly discover his location, the Isle of Sheppey, just north and across the water from where Annabelle is. Candy, on the other hand, starts off in a remote field and is immediately spotted by the Interceptor, as he berates his helicopter pilot Mikey for being late. The relationship between the Interceptor and Mikey is definitely one of the show's highlights. The banter between the two is excellent. Candy soon learns that she is at Upper Ensign, and the key she seeks is located in the castle at Chillum, and she begins to make her way there. After making his way to a nearby pub, Mark convinces one of the locals to give him a lift across the water on a boat, just as the Interceptor is drawing near. However, with the boat a quarter of a mile from the sea, Mark and the boat owners must push the boat down to the coast, leaving Mark in the open to be spotted by the Interceptor, who makes a scarily low pass to shoot at Mark's backpack. Mark smartly keeps his back to the Interceptor, making it difficult for him to get a clear shot. 
and after some trouble getting the boat started, is eventually able to make his escape across the river. On the other side, Mark finds someone who has a car and is able to give him a lift away from the coast and towards Faversham, where Annabelle is. Meanwhile, Candy has asked a milkman for a lift on his float to Chillum Castle, and after a short journey, she begins running towards the castle entrance. She enters the castle grounds to look for the key, and after running around to the back, comes across some kind of medieval reenactment with sword-fighting knights, and soon learns that in order to retrieve her key, she has to joust for it. Thankfully, she isn't jousting against someone else though, and simply has to ride the horse and use the lance to grab the key. She successfully completes the task and is awarded her key, but the interceptor has spotted what was going on, and has landed to pursue Candy on foot. Unfortunately for him, he is too late, as Candy has convinced someone to give her a lift away from the area. The interceptor brazenly steals one of the horses and pursues the car down the road, eventually catching up and attempting to shoot Candy's backpack. But Candy is able to make her escape, and the interceptor eventually returns to his helicopter to continue the pursuit. And his frustrations are clear to see. While all this was happening, Mark had made it to Faversham, met up with Annabelle, and caught a lift in the back of a removal truck full of furniture to head towards Holmstall Farm in search of his key. After arriving at the farm, Mark learns that his key is located in a beehive, and he must don a beekeeping suit in order to go in and retrieve it. And if that wasn't enough, the interceptor is hot on his heels. As Mark methodically goes through each section of the beehive in search of the key, the interceptor has landed nearby to chase after Mark. Luckily, Mark is able to retrieve the key, but the interceptor and the helicopter begin stalking him, delaying his escape. Eventually, the interceptor enters the orchard and gets down low in an attempt to spot where Mark is. With less than five minutes remaining, Candy is still in the car heading towards Mark. Now that they both have their keys, all they have to do is meet up and open the backpacks to win the £1,000. In a nail-biting chase through the orchard, the interceptor is able to catch up to Mark and zap his backpack, locking it forever. But Mark was completely oblivious to this and kept going. Eventually though, the interceptor gives Mark the fright of his life. Jesus! Kill! Over the fence! Over the fence! The money could be in Candy's backpack though, so Mark presses on with less than a minute remaining. All they have to do is get to each other and the clock will stop. But despite driving past each other on the road, there just isn't enough time for them to catch up with each other. And the clock runs out, signaling the end of the game. Annabelle meets up with Candy and Mark to give her commiserations. And after checking their backpacks, we learn that even if they had met up in time, Mark had the money and his backpack had been locked by the Interceptor. For their efforts, Mark and Candy go away with the Consolation Prize, an Interceptor Adventure Pack, which contains a map of the area, binoculars and compasses to remember their time on the show. A nail-biting first episode that piqued the interest of viewers across the country. Episode 2 begins with Annabelle and our two contestants, Roger and Claire, out in the North Sea on a gas platform. After the usual rules recap, Roger and Claire are flown to their starting locations. Claire finds herself at Burney Arms, a settlement on the north bank of the River Yare, and Roger has wandered off from where he was dropped off into the grounds of a church, an easy place to pinpoint on the map, if he can find out what the church is called. Claire's key is located in the town of Reedham, where Annabelle is based, and is attached to the sail of a yacht that is floating up the river. Claire legs it to a train station to make her way south to Reedham, with the interceptor in hot pursuit. Careful maneuvering is required from Claire to keep her back to the interceptor as she boards the train. Roger's key, on the other hand, is very close to his starting location, in the grounds of a stately home more specifically, in the middle of a hedge maze. By this point, the interceptor has switched targets and is hot on the heels of Roger, having landed nearby to begin his chase. And look at this impressive flip over the fence. 
As the interceptor stalks his prey, Roger finally reaches the middle of the maze and retrieves the key. But the interceptor essentially has him cornered. The only way out of the maze is going to be past the interceptor, who is lying in wait, getting updates from Mikey the helicopter pilot on Roger's route through the maze. Eventually, Roger runs into the interceptor and begins sprinting to get away from him, trying to keep his back away from him. The interceptor gets some shots in, but it isn't clear if he has hit the backpack or not. Roger eventually gets into the back of a vehicle to make his escape, but not before this heart-stopping scare. Oh no! <laughs> While Roger was retrieving his key, Claire had arrived in Reedham and boarded a boat Annabelle had found for her to chase after the key that was sailing up the river. The interceptor has changed targets though and is now stalking Claire as she speeds up the river. Claire eventually reaches the boat with the black sail and is able to successfully retrieve her key, meaning that both Claire and Roger have their keys and all they have to do is meet up and touch to stop the clock. Two car rides and a bit of running later and Roger has made it to the transport he was looking for, a speedboat that will help him reach Claire on time. Frustrated at his inability to shoot the backpack from the helicopter, the interceptor lands nearby and after bribing the owner of a boat, is able to make his last pursuit for the contestants. With the timer running down, the interceptor takes control of his boat, but is intercepted himself by the police as he had apparently exceeded the speed limit and Roger and Claire are able to successfully touch hands and stop the timer. Claire, touch hands! Claire, touch hands! Touch hands, touch hands! It turns out that the interceptor had failed to lock Roger's backpack when he found him earlier in the hedge maze and Roger and Claire become our first winners, while the interceptor is swiftly taken away by the police. We start episode 3 by meeting our next contestants, Sue and Mark, on the grounds of Clan Tony Priory in Monmouthshire, Wales. And after the opening formalities, both Mark and Sue are dropped off at their starting locations. In this game, both at the top of small mountains. Almost as soon as Mark sets off towards his key, he is found by the interceptor and must crouch down by the mountain rocks to hide his backpack. I thought it was funny when Mark was shooing away the interceptor here. As Mark gets down the hill, he notices a building with what looks like fire emanating from it and a lot of people surrounding it, so he decides to head in that direction. Sue starts taking off from her starting position towards the nearest road, and after being refused a lift on horseback, she notices a Land Rover on the road just as the Interceptor is approaching her and decides to make a run for it, but the Interceptor makes a perilous dive right towards her. Sue makes it to the Land Rover, but I'm assuming they refuse to help her as she starts running away from the Interceptor, who is now on foot. It looks for all the world that Sue's backpack will be locked right here. But by the greatest stroke of luck, which is of course planned transport the show has put on for the contestants, two motorcyclists come to Sue's rescue and transport her to safety. Back over to Mark, who has made it down to the bottom of the hill and is met by an army soldier who is taking part in a mock battle. And what follows is one of my favorite scenes in Interceptor. Having failed to catch Sue, the Interceptor makes his way back over to Mark, who by this point is heading down a gully towards a barn at the bottom, while gunfire and explosions go off around him. The Interceptor decides to pursue on foot down the gully, while the helicopter goes back up to direct from the air. This scene of the episode looked very realistic. You could definitely feel the tension of the situation as Mark tries to hide from the Interceptor. After making it down to the grounds of the barn, the Interceptor catches up to Mark, but he keeps his back away to protect his backpack and the soldiers help shield Mark from the Interceptor's shots. After some more quick maneuvering, Mark eventually makes it into the barn and is able to retrieve his key, but the Interceptor comes back for one more attempt and shoots his infrared gun into the barn a few times. Had he hit Mark's backpack and locked it forever? We'd have to wait until the end of the show to find out. While all this was happening, Sue is still on the motorcycle she had gotten on earlier, 
and is eventually dropped off close to the village of Heon Wai, which is where Annabelle is based. She can see the interceptor though, and is wary about being out in the open. She eventually makes it down to the side of the river, and learns from some canoeists that her key is on a nearby bridge. The canoeists agree to take her out to retrieve the key, but the interceptor has spotted her, and the helicopter starts diving towards the river, in an attempt to shoot her backpack. The interceptor soon gives up, however, and Sue is able to proceed on to the key. With only minutes left to go, Mark arrives at Heon Wai and meets Annabelle, who directs him towards the bridge that Sue is heading towards. The interceptor is now on land in a vehicle, though, and so the chase is on. Just as Mark arrives at the bridge, Sue retrieves her key and starts heading up the riverbank. But right at that moment, the interceptor makes a dramatic speedy entrance and begins chasing after Mark. Which side of the river are you? Oh, Mark eventually ends up cornered underneath the bridge with nowhere to go. He is able to edge his way back up carefully to keep his backpack turned away from the interceptor at all times. And with only one minute left to spare, Sue runs into Mark's arms and the clock is stopped. Unfortunately, upon attempting to open their backpacks, they realize that the interceptor had got them both. And Sue and Mark ended up going away with the interceptor adventure packs as their consolation prize. The interceptor had been victorious once again. <laughs> I like it! The Lake District is our setting for episode 4, and Suzanne and Max are our contestants. Annabelle points out the steam launch Osprey behind her at the start of the program, and I assumed that maybe the contestants would be taken to their starting locations in that. But no, we're sticking with the trusty helicopter. Suzanne is dropped off at Greendale Farm, with her key due south at Wasdale Hall, and Max's starting location is a hill at Newtown, just south of Moncaster Castle with his key at Eskdale Green at the Outward Bound Center, where Annabelle is based. The Interceptor starts his hunt by going after Suzanne with this sweeping low pass over the hills. He gets close, but decides in the end not to land, and instead goes after Max. Suzanne proceeds on to Wasdale Hall, eventually convincing someone to give her a lift in the back of their truck. Max has been on quite the jog, and has made it down the hill and is now outside Moncaster Castle, where he finds a lift in the direction of Eskdale Green. The driver informs him that he could take a train to Eskdale Green instead, and Max decides that this is probably the best option. But can he get there before the Interceptor catches him? Just as Max makes it to the train station, the Interceptor arrives, and Max makes a mad dash towards the platform, keeping his back away from the Interceptor. Thankfully, he makes it onto the train no problem, and is on his way. The train he got on was a pretty cool looking open top train that must have provided some amazing views through the countryside of the Lake District. Meanwhile, Suzanne arrives close to Wasdale Hall, and takes a leisurely jog down the path. At the bottom, she reaches the shore of a lake, and learns that her key is out in the middle of the water. Thankfully, there is a kind of raft bridge on the water, and some people offer to help her retrieve the key. Suzanne has to carefully move across the raft bridge towards the key, but the interceptor is closing in on her. Rather than land though, which I think would have been a better idea to trap her out on the raft bridge with nowhere to go, the interceptor chooses to make a low pass over the water to shoot the backpack. Thankfully, Suzanne is able to retrieve her key and continually avoid the Interceptor's shots, but we'd have to wait until later to see if it was enough to save her backpack from being locked. After this, she finds someone that will give her a lift to Eskdale Green where Annabelle is. Max is still on the train, and the conductor tells him that it's probably a good idea to get off at the stop after the one Annabelle is telling him to get off at. Max then strangely says that the conductor looks like a local because he has a long beard, and the conductor doesn't look too impressed by the comment. This, this guy looks like a local, he's got a long beard, so I think he knows what he's talking about. You know what they say about men with beards? The interceptor is back for Max, and decides to land ahead of the train and attempt to ambush Max as the train passes. 
As the train approaches the station, Max sees the interceptor standing menacingly on the bridge ahead. As the train passes under, the interceptor boards the train from the back. It's worth mentioning that the train isn't going that fast. The interceptor begins making his way towards the front of the train, but Max decides to make a run for it. After a short jog, he makes it to a nearby lake. Annabelle's base is on the other side, and Max's key is not far away. And I'll tell you what, those cameramen must have been seriously fit having to run with the contestants while carrying what would have been a very heavy camera. Not too far away, the interceptor commandeers a motorbike and begins chasing after Suzanne, who is sitting on the back of a truck on her way to Eskdale Green. Around the back of the house, Max learns that in order to retrieve his key, he has to complete a high ropes course. But there isn't much time left, so he has to get a move on. I must admit that high ropes course looks like a lot of fun. I'd love to give that a go. Just as Max begins the course, the interceptor arrives at his location, but he has no idea exactly where Max and Suzanne are. With just over two minutes to go, Max retrieves his key and descends from the high rope course. All that is left is for Suzanne to meet up with Max in time. Knowing she is on her way, the interceptor blocks the road ahead and waits for Suzanne to arrive. But with literally seconds to spare, Max and Suzanne are able to touch to end the game. After opening Suzanne's case, they obtain the £1,000 and win the game. The second winners on Interceptor. Episode 5 begins atop the Heights of Abraham in Derbyshire, overlooking the town of Matlock, and our contestants are Hilary and Martin. Annabelle heads off to the town of Bakewell, where she will be based, while Hilary is dropped off on a remote valley at Latkill Dale, and Martin starts his course at Emperor Lake, just to the east of Chatsworth House, where his key is located. After discovering Hilary's location, Annabelle informs her that her key is located at Haddon Hall, and she begins to make her way there. But after initially going after Martin, the Interceptor has now turned his attention to Hillary. After finding her, he attempts a few shots, but he's too far away. However, the Interceptor has a plan. A plan that is remembered as an iconic moment in the show. He lands nearby and bribes a farmer to let him borrow his tractor. Dressed in a disguise, he lies in wait, having told the farmer to let Hillary get on the back of the tractor if she asks for a lift. I thought the farmer would have told Hillary about the danger, but no. He gives her up and lets her get on the back of the tractor. She is now at the mercy of the Interceptor. By the way, I'm loving the Interceptor's attempt at a different accent here. All right, Gov. Just up on back, up on back. Is that on? Is that on? Back over to Martin, who is having a whale of a time heading down the hillside towards Chatsworth House. Absolutely lovely waterfall. God, I wish I could stay here some time and look at that. On his way down, he noticed that his key is located at the top of a fountain, and with no way to reach it, he eventually finds some groundsmen with a ladder who agree to help him climb to the top and retrieve the key. Thinking she is safe from the Interceptor, Hillary is about to get a very big surprise. The Interceptor tells Mikey to land the helicopter, and he pulls over at the side of the road to ambush Hillary as she is transferring between vehicles. It's a perfect shot, and Hillary's backpack is most certainly locked forever. The Interceptor even tries to climb onto the truck as it's leaving to try to get one more shot just to be sure. But the game isn't over yet. Martin could be holding the money, so it's up to Hillary now to find the key and meet up with Martin. Having found his key, Martin searches the grounds of Chatsworth House for some transport when he runs into the Interceptor. A chase inside the house ensues, and the Interceptor thinks he's hit the backpack as Martin makes his escape. It certainly doesn't look good, but Martin eventually exits the grounds on a horse and carriage. Hillary is still pressing on for her key and is now on foot running towards Haddon Hall. Upon arrival, she finds a small building where the key is located and is able to retrieve it at the top of a ladder. Now, with only five minutes remaining, 
all Martin and Hillary have to do is meet up and the timer will stop. But with the timer running down and simply too much distance between them, they were unable to meet up in time and were unfortunately unsuccessful. This was a very entertaining episode. Episode 6 takes place in Scotland, my home country, and we kick things off at Ferniehurst Castle in the Borders near Jedburgh with our two contestants, Mike and Sarah. Annabelle's base in this episode is in the village of Kelso. As always, our contestants are dropped off in the middle of nowhere. Annabelle and Mike quickly figure out that he is on Bemerside Hill, and his key is located in a quarry just north of where he is. But before Sarah is able to describe her surroundings, she is spotted by the Interceptor, and must make a dash for cover. The Interceptor takes a shot from a low pass in the helicopter that looked very close to hitting her backpack so early on in the game. Sarah makes it to a nearby bridge, gingerly makes her way across, and the Interceptor disappears. Annabelle eventually figures out Sarah's location and tells her that her key is at Floor's Castle, northeast of her current location. After running around for a while, she happens across some conveniently placed bicycles and takes one to speed up her journey towards her key. Meanwhile, Mike has found a farmer with a Land Rover who can give him a lift, but not before he helps him feed his sheep. Eventually, Mike completes his task, earns his lift, and is on his way to the quarry. But along the way, the Interceptor finds him and makes a low pass to find his shot. The Interceptor flies ahead of Mike's location and spots the sign for the key in the quarry. Upon arriving, Mike starts asking for help to find the key and eventually spots it on the side of a building. As he is running around the quarry asking for help, the Interceptor circles overhead and continuously shoots at Mike's backpack. But at such a great distance, it's unlikely the shots were actually successful. Mike climbs up a ramp into an engine house and is able to retrieve his key as the Interceptor hovers outside. But the danger is not over just yet. The Interceptor lands nearby to pursue on foot, and just as Mike gets a lift from a lorry driver and jumps into the back, the Interceptor appears right in front of him. Oh no, he's here! Right beside me! Mike does a good job of keeping his backpack hidden from the Interceptor's shots and eventually makes his escape. While all this was going on, Sarah had eventually reached the nearest village on her bicycle and had convinced some locals to give her a lift. The Interceptor isn't giving up on Mike though and continues his pursuit from the air. Some expert helicopter piloting brings the Interceptor in close, but Mike knows the drill and keeps his back well and truly hidden. The Interceptor goes for plan B and lands in the next village and just as Mike is climbing down from the lorry, the Interceptor shoots from a distance. Mike is frantically searching for alternative transport out of the area, and eventually spots the Interceptor across the road, hiding behind a bush. Mike sideways runs away from the Interceptor and is able to get a lift just in the nick of time. But has his backpack already been locked? We'll have to wait to find out. Back over to Sarah, who has only 10 minutes to retrieve her key and meet up with Mike. She finally arrives at Floor's castle and heads down towards the river. Her key is on one of the rafts in a race that is happening on the river, and she boards one of the other rafts with a large rocket on it to paddle towards the key. Just as she begins heading out to the key, however, the Interceptor comes flying in, mere meters above the water. <laughs> This is looking good. I don't know what this is, but I want to say this. Annabelle instructs Mike to head to where Sarah is and to run down to the river. There is only five minutes left. The Interceptor lands next to the river and commandeers a passing boat to help him get closer to Sarah. And it seems that Sarah has left it too late to go for the key as the Interceptor comes floating right in front of her. Go away! I'm not moving! The Interceptor thinks he's done enough and turns his attention to Mike, who is approaching with only one minute to go. But Sarah has got the key. She is able to get close enough to grab it 
and begins heading north. She catches a lift to speed towards the castle just as Mike is sprinting in her direction, but unfortunately there just isn't enough time and the clock runs out. Mike and Sarah were unsuccessful on this episode. Back in Kelso, Annabelle checks their backpacks anyway, and they learn that had they been able to meet up on time, they would have won the £1,000. The penultimate episode takes place in the Cotswolds, and we meet brother and sister team Nikki and Marcel. Annabelle's base in this episode is in the village of Chipping Camden, and at the start of the game, we learn that Nikki has been dropped at Batsford Park and must head towards Morton in Marsh to find her key. Marcel, on the other hand, is immediately under attack from the Interceptor, but Annabelle is able to guess his starting location from the road he is close to, and his key is located close to Annabelle in Chipping Camden. Nikki eventually reaches a church and is able to get a lift from the groundskeeper, and while we thought the Interceptor was going after her, he's back with Marcel, who takes cover under some nearby trees. Thinking the coast is clear, Marcel reappears, but is immediately spotted by the Interceptor, who lands nearby to go in for the kill. Marcel finds transport in the form of a quad bike, and he thinks the Interceptor is in the helicopter, when in fact he's running straight towards him. Just as Marcel gets on the quad bike, the Interceptor gets a clear view of his backpack and makes three zaps to lock it. The Interceptor believes he was successful. I got three good zaps there. Meanwhile, Nikki has reached the fire service college at Morton and Marsh, where her key is located, and spots a fire training exercise in progress. Her key is located at the top of the burning building, and in order to retrieve it, she must ride a hydraulic lift up to the top and help put out the fire. But just as she begins, the Interceptor arrives. And look at this incredible helicopter piloting from Mikey. <laughs> I like it. Nikki reaches the top and retrieves her key. But the Interceptor has landed and is coming after her. He rides the same hydraulic lift to the top of the building in pursuit of Nikki. But she instead exits through the burning building and gets a lift out of the area on an old fashioned fire truck. While this was happening, Marcel eventually finds someone with a Land Rover who agrees to drive him towards his destination. But the driver is on the way to the vet, and Marcel is given an injured baby lamb to hold in the back of the truck. We've got an injured sheep. Lamb. Injured sheep. <laughs> Say hello to the camera. Come on, hello. 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 Marcel is eventually dropped off in the village of Broadway, and for some reason decides to get some ice cream, for which he is promptly scolded by Annabelle. And they're giving me an ice cream to... We haven't got time to eat ice creams. Hurry uh, up! You haven't got I'm time going to, to hurry ice up. Cream. Ice cream in hand, he gets a lift on the back of another truck towards Chipping Camden. Nikki has now caught a lift in an open-top car, and is also on her way towards Chipping Camden but the Interceptor eventually spots her and attempts to shoot her from the air. This low pass right next to the car looked particularly impressive. Marcel eventually arrives in Chipping Camden and meets up with Annabelle, but he has to go and get his key first, which is located next to the village church. However, upon arriving, he learns that in order to earn his key, he has to complete a chariot race and begins running while pulling one of the chariots down the road. And I'll tell you what, this looks like it must have been absolutely exhausting. Kudos to him for fighting until the end. With time ticking down, the Interceptor decides to land and get on his Kawasaki motorcycle to pursue the contestants, and heads towards Chipping Camden. As he reaches the town, he gets off the bike and pursues on foot. Marcel is somehow still running with his chariot, just as Nikki is arriving in the town. Marcel's key is located at the finish line of the race, but right around the corner, the Interceptor is lying in wait. The Interceptor decides to take a route through a hotel to the main street, and after hiding behind a car, he makes his move and fires directly at Marcel's backpack. Marcel turns his back to shield the backpack, but was it too late? With one minute to go, Nikki arrives close to the center of town and decides to run the rest of the way. 
and with 30 seconds to spare, they meet up and the clock is stopped. With the interceptor lurking nearby, Nikki opens her backpack first and the £1,000 is theirs. Marcel and Nikki have successfully defeated the interceptor and he looks furious. This was another incredible episode, but little did we know that there would only be one more episode of this incredible TV show remaining. The final episode of Interceptor took place four months after the previous episode and was broadcast as a Christmas special on New Year's Day 1990. Annabelle and our two final contestants, Clive and Sarah, start the episode on the north coast of Cornwall at the lighthouse at Travaux's Head. The rules are read out, the contestants are transported to their starting locations and Annabelle relocates to her base in the fishing village of Port Isaac. At the start of the game, Annabelle and Clive identify his starting location, which is Rump's Point, and his key is out in the middle of the water, but seemingly out of nowhere, Clive spots the Interceptor's black helicopter swooping down low over the bay. Clive takes off running south, and the Interceptor decides to land nearby and pursue on foot. The Interceptor smells an early kill. Annabelle and Sarah eventually identify her starting location as St. Enodoc Church, and her key is located at Trello, south of her location. The only problem is that she's going to have to get across some water to reach the other side on time. Clive makes it to a nearby farm and asks for transport out of the area. But he doesn't notice the Interceptor, who is hiding behind a wall right beside him. With the helicopter circling overhead, the Interceptor takes a shot at Clive's backpack without him even noticing. Clive gets on the back of a truck and starts leaving the farm, but he's too preoccupied looking at the helicopter overhead and has no idea the Interceptor is right in front of him. The Interceptor runs right alongside the truck and zaps Clive's backpack. Yes! Pick me up, Mikey! Surely that was a direct hit, and Clive's pack is now locked forever. Back over to Sarah, who has now reached the beach and gets a lift on a hovercraft to the other side. But the Interceptor is nearby and spots the hovercraft speeding across the water, and he goes in for a zap at Sarah's backpack. This pass right over the hovercraft was particularly incredible. Sarah eventually makes it to the other side and finds transport out of the area in a Morris Minor. Back with Clive, he has now made it down to the beach and his key is out in the water. He gets a lift on a jet ski out to the lifeboat in the middle of the bay that holds his key. The Interceptor makes a few passes but eventually decides to go after Sarah instead. When Clive gets to the lifeboat, he is told that his key is underwater. In fact, it is attached to the boat's anchor and must be heaved out of the water. After a lot of hard work, Clive eventually retrieves the key and is then informed by the lifeboat men that they have a helicopter operating in the area that could go and pick up Sarah and bring her to him. After communicating this to Annabelle, they decide that with time ticking down, this is the best option. As Sarah is getting closer to her key position, the Interceptor spots it from above and decides to land nearby and ambush Sarah when she arrives. And just as she arrives at the Shire Horse Centre, the Interceptor is lying in wait, hidden behind a fence. He gets a clear and open shot at Sarah's backpack, and she has absolutely no idea. He then scares the bejesus out of Sarah, as she cowers against a wall trying to protect her backpack. <laughs> Shut up, dog! She eventually convinces this shirtless gentleman to walk behind her as she tries to figure out where the key is and realizes it is on one of the horses in front of her. She gets on top of the horse and begins undoing the ribbons on the horse's neck to get the key. Right outside the grounds of the Shire Horse Center, the Sea King lifeboat helicopter is waiting for her to take her to where Clive is. The Interceptor, now back in his helicopter, returns to the lifeboat and is bemused as to how Clive and Sarah are going to meet up with such little time remaining. 
but Mikey the pilot overhears on air traffic control that a rescue helicopter is picking someone up nearby and realizes that must be Sarah. They eventually find the Sea King helicopter and creep up next to the open door. And Sarah looks absolutely terrified. With two minutes remaining, Sarah apprehensively edges closer to the open door of the helicopter to be lowered down onto the lifeboat. The interceptor is hovering nearby, attempting to get a few final shots off before Sarah and Clive meet up. Sarah doesn't want to go, but she has no choice and eventually exits the helicopter and is hanging perilously above the water as she is lowered down. And with seconds to spare, Sarah makes it down onto the boat and touches Clive's hand to end the game. But have they won the money? Well, Clive checks his backpack first and realizes that he had indeed been zapped by the interceptor and his backpack is locked. Sarah's backpack opens, but she doesn't have the money. The money was in Clive's backpack and unfortunately, despite their best efforts, they were unsuccessful in retrieving the £1,000. Annabelle comes to meet them on the boat to give them their consolation prizes, and with that, Interceptor was over. At the time of Interceptor's broadcast, ITV was going through a period of change. ITV franchise Thames, who had produced the show alongside Chatsworth, were keen on proposing a second series of Interceptor. They were already responsible for a large section of ITV's primetime shows, and because they were concerned about the company's profitability, and Interceptor was a relatively expensive show to produce, unfortunately, the show was never recommissioned. Later in 1990, new Chatsworth game show The Crystal Maze would debut on Channel 4 and go on to be a huge success. But fans of Interceptor were left disappointed that eight episodes was all they were going to get and Interceptor would be no more. Despite the disappointment among fans, Interceptor's legacy has lived on in the years since its cancellation. Pressure exerted by fans led to Challenge TV repeating the series on and off from 2001 to 2015, and a public poll on the website UK Game Shows in 2002 saw the series voted the UK's 13th best game show. The show's unique presence and intense gameplay has continued to capture the imagination of viewers in the years since sparking fond memories for those who had experienced the thrill of watching contestants evade the Interceptor's pursuit. While its predecessor, Treasure Hunt, will always hold a special place in my heart, I thoroughly enjoyed Interceptor, and watching all eight episodes back in research for this video was a real joy. I highly recommend checking out the episodes in full, all of which can be found here on YouTube. It would have been incredible if Interceptor had been recommissioned for more series, as I think the format was just right for the perfect action-adventure game show. Treasure Hunt's main downfall was that the tension only really ratcheted up towards the end of the show, as the Skyrunner was getting close to the final treasure. But with Interceptor, it was non-stop action from start to finish. It was a game show that should have never been cancelled after one series. I think this show would do very well if it was rebooted in the modern era. And who knows, with a string of recent reboots of classic game shows, maybe Interceptor's days aren't over, and we might see it make a triumphant return to our TV screens sometime in the future. Thanks for watching everyone. I would like to give a huge shout out to Chris Hart, the creator of the Interceptor's Lair website whose support and help was crucial in the creation of this video. Check out Chris's website, The Interceptor's Lair, using the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. I would love to hear your thoughts and memories of this incredible show in the comments below, and if you have any suggestions for future videos, I'd love to hear them. Many thanks, and see you in the next video.